No, oh, though I have an opening video. Hey everybody, SP Diablo here with Fate. What would, how would you say a Fate slash Extra? Let's just say Fate Extra. I I played this game before, but I never finished it. I played like a little bit of it a long time ago, and I forgot I had it. <laughs> so I figured I would do a playthrough of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this mode is for those who wish to fully enjoy the experience. Yeah, let's go with normal mode. There are a number of dead ends and potentially fatal choices in the game. It is recommended that you create multiple. Ah! Uh, the story in these games is a work of fiction and resemblance to any real person or location is truly coincidental. So I have to create multiple saves because I could run into a dead end and lose everything, basically. It's a bright, sunny morning. The air is filled with the joyful laughter of students. There's more activity than normal in front of the school gate. A crowd is forming as students are being called over. I wonder what's going on. When I peer into the center of the hub hubbub, I see my friend and student council president. I say, you know, I'm not sure how to say that. Good morning. Lovely weather we're having, don't you think? Hmm, why you look so surprised? We announced at last week's assembly that this month the student council would strictly enforce school rules. I have been tasked with performing inspections to ensure students are in compliance with school rules. Now, it goes without saying that everyone is subject to inspections, even old friends. Now then, uniform inspection time. Collar check, pant helms check, and your socks check. Next is the contents of your bag. Notebooks, textbooks, pencil box, not even a whip of contraband. You have to have certain things in your bag, really? Um, your nails are evenly cut and your haircut is sensible. And you can't have your hair or your nails the way you want. Okay. Indeed. Quite remarkable. You're a model Tsuki, Tsukumihara Academy student. Someone like you ought to consider a future in student government. You'd be perfect for it. Oh, but I never try to coerce you into joining the student council. We aren't like that. Now then, off to your classroom. Enjoy your day. Before I, can before I can reply, Mr. Diligent Student Council President is on to the next student's inspection. Hungry for gossip on their way to their classrooms, the students jabber about the inspection. Things are always so gently bustling in the morning. Another peaceful beginning to another peaceful day. Uh, press triangle bottom cameras to open the system menu. Here you can save your game, adjust game options, etc. So I can save anytime. Hmm, that's good there. But I haven't done it yet, so let's just keep it moving. Where am I supposed to go in my classroom? I'm pretty sure he just got here. Oh man, I gotta go to the bathroom before home and start. My eyes are starting to float. I'm like... Oh, okay. I we better head to the classroom. Our classroom? 2A ring, 2A ring a bell? Why was I reading it so wrong? 2A, here we go. Chimes raise curtains on humble days. Presses as a handful of gold dust. My cat is outside just yelling. She'll really let him in. As I enter class, I see Mattel with a bunch of girls. Why he's so popular is a mystery. Why anybody is certain people are popular, I never know. They have Japanese voices? I don't remember this. But I'll, I think I'll leave it on in case people want to hear it. Hey, when did you show up? You're so quiet and dull that I didn't even notice you. Even though we, hey, we've been friends since our freshman year, right? See, this is weird because I have to let him talk and then I have to talk. I might turn it off. Anyway, don't sweat the fact that you're as boring as dirt. It's not like you can help it. I don't like this guy already. He just only said a few things. I mean, anyone would seem boring and stupid when compared to me. Why are you friends with him? Why do girls even like him? That's people for you. It's a little early for so much abuse, but as is Shinji Mattel, it can't be helped. His arrogance is almost palatable. 
I don't know what he's saying, but it makes all the girls squirrel with joy. Really? Him insulting people makes girls squirrel with joy? Actually, let me rephrase. His popularity isn't so much mysterious as it is unnatural. Yes, that's definitely unnatural, but that's people. Oh, the voices are gone. I was just doing a little math tutoring. This stuff is beyond easy. For me, anyway. Wait a sec. Hey, Mento, isn't the answer to this question totally wrong in every way? Well, what in the... I'm the one who saw that. There's no way it could be wrong. But look at this. Since when did 2 plus 2 equal 5? I never make such a stupid mistake. It's all your fault. You're the idiot here, not me. Really? And y'all want to be around him? As Shinji raises his voice, the girls all panic and run back to their desk. <sighs> I hate dealing with the pro proliter <laughs> proletariat, especially when they think they're my equal. It's really pathetic that these worms don't know their place. That's why I like you so much. Even though you're boring, you know not to steal my thunder. You're the ultimate sidekick. Shinji flashes me a smile. It's weird how I never take offense at the way he talks to me. By some strange twist of fate, Shinji Mattel and I are friends. How we became friends was... I can't quite remember how it happened. I want to say we met in spring sometime. The bell for class rings as I try to recollect. Recollect. And who could follow... And who should fly through the door but our homeroom teacher, Ms. Fujimura. Fujimura. Phew, I made it. Good morning, every <laughs> Her face. And dud. Miss Fujimura trips, falling painfully onto the floor. As she lands, her head strikes the corner of the platform at the front of the classroom. The classroom goes dead silent. Every student's attention is focused on the same thing. Again, how does she manage to trip in the same place every time? Listen, you. This isn't a time to be making stupid jokes. You're right, she isn't moving. Did she get knocked out or something? A few brave students get out of their seats and crowd around the still comatose Fujimura. Hey, Miss Fujimura. Miss Fujimura? Um, are you okay? Uh, what? Huh? What's wrong, everyone? Hey, class about to start, so get back to your seats. Pronto. Miss Fujimura jumps to her feet as if nothing had happened. It's almost as if the memory of her sudden and violent trip to the floor was totally erased. That just happens all the time. No one seems to notice or care enough to say anything. No one gives a thought to how odd it is for this to happen every single day. Shouldn't she have like a concussion or something when she hits her head all the time? The scene playing out before me seems to have never change from day to day. The same exact lessons, the same effects, the exact same subject, the exact same content. Um, today we're going to study the biography of Dr. Peaceman, a talented physician who teach, teach, type people. I mean, Miss Fujimura is conducting class today the same way she does every day. Oh, Taiga. Okay, he was about to say her first name. You may not know, but when I was young, an unknown pathogen was to cause a serious epidemic. In fact, outbreaks were common, but now most illnesses are cured using nano thingy majigs. I don't think makes. that's something I would say. And FYI, I'm still young. This would be on a test, so be sure you don't forget it. I mean it. Her ensuing laughter stops short at her eyes, which seemed deadly serious. Just as everyone's about to call Fujimura out, the bell singing the end of class rings. Alright, that's all for today. Be sure to study hard tonight, and don't forget those important points I told you about. While today's class wasn't all that boring, there's a relief when the bell rings. As the bell is signaling the end of the day sound, students begin to break off into small groups. Thank god that's over. I was getting sick of all the busy work. Being a student sucks. The worst part of the whole deal is having to attend these stupid classes. You're still here? That's unusual. You don't have any plans? Like a date or something? Haha, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I know you're too big of a nerd to ever get a date. The heck? I mean, you're just going to your dork club, the journalism club, right? Well, seeing as you're as boring as stale white bread, your life is exactly as it should be. You know exactly what your role in life is and you stay there. Well, catch you later. See you in class tomorrow. 
I still don't know why they're friends. But give me a second, I should let my cat. Okay, dude. I had to do it because he was just out there. You know, crazy. Uh, message speed fast. Invent voices on. I think I'll just leave this on. Haven't decided. I'll, I'll leave it on for now. It doesn't like they talk that much. Let me just save. Search. This is where Strinity sits. Shinji's desk is sternly organized, a reflection of his obsessive compulsive personality. So I should go to my club. Hey, the editor in chief of the journal club is calling a general meeting. You better go. I guess the journal club's been busy. I mean, with all the weird stuff happening. Weird stuff. Recently, a lot of students have been getting hurt. Rumor is that rumor is that there's a slasher on campus. So where's my club actually? I actually just calling the calling from trying to go talk to her. But where is she? Is that her? Hold on a second. Look who's here. It's the newspaper club's ace, Ghani Leeds. What? Did you forget? You have to write an unsolved mysteries of Tsukumihara Su article. Come on, I told you yesterday. There isn't very much time left before the deadline. Well, whatever. Your work's always good, so I'll leave this in your capable hand. Geez, my benevolence is like a black panther running around. Yes, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I was about to say that. So that's that. I've done some of the investigating. It's your job to do the rest. Don't look so surprised. There's a method to my madness. Okay, so about the first preview edition. The one called Gateway to the Paranormal. So listen, there's supposedly an entrance to the spirit world at the rear of the archery range. One time, a male student who got bullied a lot was told to pick up trash there and vanish. Everyone's totally convinced that there's paranormal activity going on back there. Isn't that scary? I mean, ridiculous? Anyway, go sniff out the truth. Leave no stone unturned. Your nose and eyes are the tools of the trade for a journalist. Got it? Sure. Your reply should be, yes ma'am. Alright, hop to it. Why? Wow, you got the gist of it. Now where's the archery range? I, I have no no idea where anything is. Okay, it's not back there. It's probably on like the first floor or something. Hey, what's down here? School com commissary. Cafeteria just it looks like they're still getting there. You mean it's the evening? Can they be done? <laughs> So I have to go outside, it's like the RG ring somewhere else. What the? Out of the blue, a feeling that something was moving behind the door overcame me. As a rule, students aren't allowed inside the supply room. It might just be a rat or something. For some unknown reason, I found my eyes drawn to the door of the supply room when the door is suddenly and violently thrown open. What do you think you're doing? Without warning, a man appears from out of the shadows. Dressed in black with a dour expression, the person in question is very intimidating. But that sense of intimidation is immediately replaced with extreme discomfort and unease. A sudden, overwhelming sense of danger gives me goosebumps all over my body. His cold, blank stare sends chills down my spine, as though he's marking me for death. For some reason, it feels as if he is deciding whether to break my neck or skin me alive. Odd, your name doesn't appear to be on the list, but I had better make sure. He begins to mutter under his breath, but at the same time he reaches out with his right hand. The chills running down my spine gain intensity as waves of nausea and vertigo wash over me. I feel like a rabbit watching a wolf draw near. Maybe this isn't just raw terror. I think he's holding something that's making me feel this way.
You're not even trying to fight. My instincts aren't as sharp as they should be. I need to rest. The note of disgust in his voice is obvious as he slowly lowers his hand. The paralysis that seemed to take hold of me suddenly fades away. The man continues to look down on me with those dead eyes of his. Students are forbidden from entering the supply room. You do well to remember that. The campus is about to close. If you have nothing else to do, I advise you to go home now. Is there anything else? My name is Mr. Kuzuki. I will be teaching here starting today. The man who introduces himself as Mr. Kuziki turns and heads back into the supply room. With that, the final bell begins to chime, signaling the end of the school day. Everything begins to progress as normal, as if nothing out of the ordinary had happened. As I, but I'm still sore and slick with sweat, an all too real reminder of what happened. Wonderful. We now have a teacher with obvious murderous intent teaching at our school. Uh, did you see him? Wasn't his name Kazuki? He seems not dangerous, but definitely merciful. Okay, I thought I was seeing things. Like, I was the only one that could see him. Is that the guy? Oh, and you said Spirit World? No clue. Maybe we should ask the Archery Club at Pfizer if you want. You want to know where Tiger is? Would she be at the Archery Club or something? Oh, so you don't call her Tiger. Okay. Priest from the neighborhood chap has been coming to school a lot lately. He's tall, dark, and handsome. Mostly dark. Okay, why'd you tell me that? Is this the archery? Yes. Yeah. Teacher! You caught me in the middle of cleaning. The archery club kids don't even unstring their bows. The worst is when they leave their arrows stuck in the target now. I usually make the kids do it, but there's no club activities leading up to exams, so I'm doing it. Huh? Into the spirit world. It's just a rumor. It's not real. Exams are right around the corner, so don't waste your time on stuff like that. Go home. Shoot. Shoot. What appears in the archery range isn't an interest in the spirit world, but top Ms. Fujimura. But I can't say I'm surprised she's behind one of Tsukumihara's mysteries. Fitting. I'll report this tomorrow so I can go home now if I want. And they will pass if you go home. Any reason to stay? Sure. Huh. Humble days, the rest of this gold dust for all the fires. They mean days remaining. As I walk into class, the girls that normally flock around to Shinji Mato aren't there. She seems to be in a bad mood today. His usual positive girls keeping their distance. I asked him if something happened. Don't, he's, don't be friends with him. What? Like I tell you if anything happened to me, which it didn't, nothing happened at all. Hey, you know that ice queen Rin Tusaka? She thinks she's so much better than everyone else. Isn't that what you think? You think you're better than everyone else? At first I thought that she, she would be the only one who understood how lonely it is at the top. I tried talking to her yesterday, but I got nowhere. Maybe I just intimidate her or something. I might have lost a few points for getting violent, but girls who talk back to me get slid. Uh, this guy. I never hook up. I never hook up with such a violent, stuck up uh, like that, no matter how hot she is. I couldn't think of a word to replace that. What a waste. She'd be perfect if she just keep her mouth shut. You agree with me, right? Right? Looks like there's some tension between Shinji and Ren to Sokka. Knowing Cindy, she, he probably hit on her and got shot down. And why did she take a shot at me? I thought she was going to going to spin her star kick me next. He continues to whine under his breath. I can only imagine how sleazy Cindy was being with her. Normally, a super aggressive approach works, but obviously it didn't work with Ren. Life's more interesting when it's got little shakeups like this. As if right on cue, Miss Fujimura barbs into the classroom as the bell sounds. I made it. Good morning, everyone. All right, no one's absent, and since there are no announcements, let's just let's just start home. And she trips again with that face. 
As soon as she turns to reach for the chalk, she trips and falls as she always does. As she falls, her fingernails drag across the black floor with a horrifying sound. I can just imagine that. And thus, another typically mundane day begins anew. And though the Great War had finally come to an end, regional conflicts still persist. Despite the suffering of the previous generation, battles are still waged 30 years on. Standing behind a lectern today is the school's newest teacher, Kuzuki. Although he's supposed to be teaching math, his lesson seems to have gone off on a tangent. Now, instead of armies, attacks in ever greater numbers are being carried out by terrorists. In an attempt to suppress these terrorist groups, with that, that bell singing the end of class it sounds. And with the end of the day here, the tension in the classroom drops immediately. All right, let's end, let us end here today. Oh yeah, before I forget, there's an announcement from the student counselor. We see a rise in the number of slash incidents that has made the surrounding area dangerous. With that in mind, keep any detours to a minimum and head home as quickly as possible. Get home quickly. Good advice, but I still have to, to finish a few assignments for the journalism club. Why I'm so gung ho about Vince getting school set on one is, is a mystery even to me, but it seems important for some reason. I have to turn in yesterday's report. I better go see the editor in chief this evening. So she's probably still in the hallway in the exact same spot. Hey, guess what? I just passed this gorgeous girl on the stairs. Could she be a new student? What? I'm sure you're just talking about Ren from Class B. I'm just not even gonna say her last name. I'm pretty sure I'm saying it wrong. Ren? Never heard of her. You really never heard of her? Pretty, athletic, smart, classy. Or a stuck up Miss Perfect who all the, all the guys adore and all the girls despise. I wouldn't be unrealistic to call Ren the most popular girl in the whole school. I don't understand popularity. All the girls despise her and all the guys like her. But she's popular. Whatever. Are you pulling my leg? Girl, you're so dense you probably wouldn't feel it if, feel it if I pulled your leg anyway. What? I'm not dense much. But she wasn't wearing our school uniform. She was wearing red. How do you explain that? I don't know. I hadn't noticed. Huh? Maybe I'm remembering. You would. Come on, let's hurt to our club. Y yeah. I guess it's just me, but when I was in school, I really didn't, couldn't care less about what anything anybody was doing or saying, so I never really understood the whole popularity concept and why certain people were caught popular at all. Oh, our club's ace. Did you find out anything yesterday? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So it was Tiger. Of course there's no answer to the spirit world. Thanks to you, the article will be great. Are you ready for the next article assignment? The next unsolved mystery is... Yesterday was a girl dressed in red on the rooftop. Rumors about little red rooftop are spreading. Go find out what this is all about. A journalist lets the news guide their feet to the rooftop. It's obviously Grant. Yeah. The girl on the rooftop? Ah, uh, her. She just happens to be up there right now. I saw her holding the key to the rooftop a moment ago. Why does she have the key to the rooftop? Is that something anybody can get? I turn the doorknob and the metal door opens slightly on its hinges. As a rule, no one is allowed up on the roof. I can see somehow elongated, someone's elongated shadow. The vibrant color set off by the setting of the sun is enough to take one's breath away. Under the now blood red sky, a single girl looks out onto the town that spreads out below. Like a figure out of a painting, the girl seems to shine with the same red glow at the setting sun. What a beautiful sunset. I can only imagine how captivating this sight must be for the people who live here. It is indeed a... Crap, I can barely hear her voice. It is indeed a very beautiful scene. A shame that it doesn't really exist. I started talking over her because I thought she was done. On the surface, it seems like such a benign, peaceful world. A pity that it'll soon come to an end.
This place is merely an idealized imitation of the real world and one done in poor taste. I have to turn down the music so I can't hear her voice. I wonder if there's any value to a memory that can only be observed and then left behind. I'm not quite sure if that last statement was supposed to express disgust or disappointment. As she finishes speaking, a faint smile forms on the girl's lips as she slowly turns in my direction. Her unwavering gaze makes it seem like she can see things hidden to others. Her eyes seem to shine with an intensity that rivals that of the fiery red of the evening sky. What's this? A notice from the system? Need to bring in to me. Huh? That's not it? That, mu that means you must be one of generic, I mean, students. If one of the irrelevant NPCs can get up here, I guess I'll have to find another place to hang out. Continue to mumble down quietly to herself, the girl quickly walks my way. Oh well, at least this is a good opportunity for me to look one of you over. Stand still, you. Okay. Unexpectedly, her finger reaches out and touches my cheek. Wait, what's this? Is this a warning from the system? Direct interference does break the rules after all. What the? She's a ghost. Bumming to herself, the girl disappears without a trace. It's like no one was ever there at all. She vanished? There or not, her form has been indelib <laughs> indelibly burned into my mind. Oh, you're still here. It's almost time to leave school, so you should prepare to go home. What's wrong? You look a little pale. The sound of Issei's voice pulls me back to reality. I must look completely dazed and confused. Maybe I'm tired, or... I'll talk with the editor-in-chief again tomorrow. In any case, I think the course of wisdom from now would be to go home like Issei says. Yeah, let's go home. So I don't really see any reason to stay. I want to see what... Like, I want to get to the end of this. Like, the day... Like, he said it was like two days left or something. Auspicious star says dazzling light. It drowns even the chime of bells. Days remaining. One. I enter the classroom. Once again, Shinji Motao and C next to me has a full house. I'm telling you, you don't have any time. Give up before you look like a retard. So you know what he said to that? What? What? What did he say? We're dying to know, tell us. This witch gets all boo-hoo and he says, I'll keep practicing until I get better. I can at least get better than you, who skips practice. Sorry, I have to laugh. Anybody that knows you can't practice your way into being a genius. Anybody knows that you can't practice your way into being a genius. If he wants to practice something, he should practice not sounding like a tool. The guy's not a total maggot, but he's still trash and he's fun a garbage can. I hate this guy already. <laughs> that moron. People aren't created equal. Even people who are born above average can never reach the same heights as the naturally gifted. You must be so talented if you don't need to practice until I feel bad for that kid. Trash can't help being trash. They should learn to stop dreaming about being something better. And now he's calling him an it. This guy. The bell rings in response to gaggle girls shuffle off to their own seats. While we wait for the teacher to arrive, I get caught up on what Shinji said for some reason. Whether or not Shinji has any talent, I think it's pretty clear that I'm a nobody. A nobody with no goals. I mean, when I try to even think about the future, I get overwhelmed. As long as I keep plodding along, someday I'll reach my totally average future. Yay. That's what happens to everyone, right? Are there actually people who break the pattern? How? I have no idea. For me, today is just another ordinary day. Uh-huh. Good morning, everyone. And she tripped. She didn't trip. Suddenly, my heart accelerates. Each beat painfully strong. It's as if my body's on high alert. I know it's not reacting to Mitch Fujimura. No. Well, kids, this is a little out of blue, but today I want to introduce you to a new friend.
It's him. That blonde boy is the one who's causing my body's fight or flight instincts to prickle. Go on, Leo. Introduce yourself. For what purpose? Huh? Well, Leo, you'll be attending school with these people, so I'm sure they'd like to know who you are. Ah, I see. These good people do not know my name yet. I was cutting him off and did not realize it. Hmm. He steps forward and then a louder voice says, Everyone, my name is Leonardo Vistario Harwin. Yeah, I figured out how to say it in the way he said it. In time, it will be an... In time, it will be a name known to all the world, but for now, it is the name of your classmate. I'm pleased to meet you all. I hope you enjoy our time together. I completely forgot to turn to Turn down the music volume so I can hear what he was saying. Wait, actually, I didn't get the chance yet. Okay. The classroom is silent. There aren't even any jabs at his eccentric manner of speaking or any clues over how pretty he is. Instead, the entire classroom is shown by his regal bearing and trance people. Chinji's words come to mind. This is what it means to be on a different level. None of us plebs could ever hope to reach the level that this new kid lives on. It's not overextending to call his very existence transfixing. Like deer in headlights, we're immobilized by a presence far brighter than our own. It's just natural places above us, looking down as our king. How did someone like him end up here? It must be a mistake. Ah, um. Anyway, everyone, please make Leo feel welcome. Then, Leo, if you would please take a seat. It looks like the third seat in the second row from the right is open. Will that be okay? Leo? Ah, you're addressing me. I see no reason to not allow you to call me Leo, as it didn't feel awkward to hear it from you. If you had the chance, I'd very much like for a delightful woman like you to visit my country. What? Jeez, don't joke with your teacher. To your seat, Leo. I won't smack you since, well, it was kind of flattering of you to say that. Of course, I appreciate your diplomacy in this future moment. Then, the boy gave the kind of easy smile that only kids can. That simple smile washes away the tension in the room, and people even begin to smile themselves. I think he's not so much a king as a prince. He may be, I, he may be above us, but he also has natural charisma that draws us up to his level. However, it seems that there is at least one person in class whose mind is very I don't like him. Flirting with the teacher already? The arrogant little twerp? Shinji's clearly not happy. If you have any questions, ask anyone in class or myself. Or, I mean, come to me first. There's no need to be shy. Yes, I understand. I'm pleased that I will be attending such a good school. A am I imagining things? Just for a second, I thought he shifted his attention toward me. Not toward anyone else, not even Shinji, who's still bad-mouthing Leo, but to me alone. Yeah, right. There's no way a practically otherworldly person I can would notice blame me. Wait, wasn't he just walking towards him? The school day ended with nothing else of interest occurring. But that Leo, I can't shake the uneasiness he woke in my heart. Feels like cogs somewhere have become misaligned. No, I'm just excited because for once something happened. Well, besides what happened yesterday. I should report yesterday's finding to the editor-in-chief. Okay, but first, let's turn it on. Okay, so we should Okay, I just need to turn it down a bit so I can actually hear what they're saying so I know when to actually start reading. Did you hear it? There was a murder here the day before yesterday. There's been a number of murders in the area recently. Scary. Oh, our club's ace. Did you find out anything yesterday? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? Little Red Rooftop vanished before your eyes. If she disappeared, there isn't anything we can do about that. Nothing we can do. What's with the editor and chief's reaction? It's not right. I thought she'd say something like, hey, don't scare me like that. Actually, the problematic part is how nonchalant she is that a person disappeared. 
Your next story would be Mystery of the Courtyard Chapel. Then she just keeps talking like nothing happened. She seriously did just ignore the fact that somebody disappeared in front of me. She's already on to the next thing. Should I say something? Hey, did you know there's a chapel on campus, even though this isn't a mission school? It seems the chapel has been here longer than the school. This is just rumor, but they say that it's haunted and magic rites are performed there. I'm sending you to investigate. Enter to the courtyards on the, on the end of the right side of the first floor hallway. Okay. It's gonna go this way. The end of the, on the right side of the right floor hallway. This? Did, the, did he just kill a bunch of students? And their eyes are wide open as if nothing happened? Wait, it looks like they're breathing. They're ghosts. The man stands like a black stain, tainting the joyfully multicolored flower beds around him. It's the new teacher, Kuzuki. But the man standing in front of me isn't acting like a teacher by any stretch of the imagination. The sick malig malignancy of overbearing aggression fills the air, and then scattered around him are dead bodies of students? Why did you come in here? I'm certain I locked that door. I suppose I'll test you out. His thin lips hardly move, but in the next instant, I'm bowled over as if struck by an invisible force. Chaotic thoughts bury my brain like endless grains of sand. What happened? Can I move my limbs? Seriously, what was that? Kazuki hasn't moved. No one else is nearby. Who? Why? How? My thoughts whirl. My heart races. I see what you are now. It isn't you, I suppose. His voice was a quiet hiss, but I could hear everything he said. This man with cold, inscrutable eyes raises his palm toward me. When I come to, I'm collapsed in the garden. The garden is silent. There's not even a trace of Kazuki or of the corpses that have been there. I'm uninjured, though my body aches from laying on the hard ground. The cold sweat that had covered me is gone too. Only the piercing pain in my head remains. Maybe it was just a bad dream. I go up air and attempt to stand. The ground seems to move under my feet. I'm delusional. Of course the ground isn't moving. I'll give my report to editor chief tomorrow and just go home for the day. Yeah, let's just go. Yeah, save. So this is the last day, right? So I mean something's gonna happen. I played this before. Cause I played it to a certain point. Which I can't really remember where. But I completely don't remember what happened. When I enter the classroom this time, things are a bit different. Wow, okay, then how do you solve this problem, Leo? In this case, you substitute this for this and divide everything by x. It's the same simple equation that you used earlier. Whoa, you're right. Thank you, Leo. I like someone else. He helps out his classmates without displaying an ounce of condescension. At least the girls being around him makes sense. Them being around the other guy, I didn't get it. And that someone is directing the Nazi squad towards the new kid. That bunch of brown nosing idiots will suck up to anyone who's got bigger pea brains than theirs. Hmm, whatever. There's no skin off my back. People who are ugly inside are ugly outside, too. I'm just not gonna comment on that. It seems that Shinji's gag of female Myers has migrated to Leo's desk. For one, Shinji's irritation is kind of understandable. I'll give him this. I give him this, the brat's a real charity worker, laying on a charm for those souls, souls, souls. He's desperate to appear smarter than me, but I'm the real smart one here. I see what he's doing. That dumb little kid doesn't know what I'm, that I'm on to him. Reacting to Shinji's voice, Leo glances this way. Leo's expression is inscrutable, but not hostile. Ah, er, what do you want? You want to go? At a few false starts, Shinji finally managed to squeeze that out in a low voice. I don't know if Leo heard, but he gets out of his seat. The recoil turns into a noticeable flinch, which Leo smiles kindly at in response. Unlike Shinji's, Leo's gestures are filled with dignity. 
If I have unknowingly given you calls to be malicious, I would like to deeply apologize. Changing my toe, was it? I'll be careful not to upset you in the future. His message firmly delivered, Leo returns to his seat. His self voice bore no note of hostility or resentment. I know it's hard to believe, but maybe Leo wasn't upset. <clears throat> he knows when to bow down to true authority, it seems. I'm such a nice guy, I'll just accept his apology. Y yeah, it's not like he ever pissed me off. After Vizzy confirmed that Leo is otherwise occupied, Shinji feigns comments on his back. Phew, I made it. Good morning, every- Okay, she's on trip this time. There it goes. And the- That sound makes me cringe, no matter how many times I hear it. Everyone is desensitized to it. Everyone's desensitized to it for the most part. Even though that she'll just jump to her feet in a few seconds, we should probably worry more. Shinji still seems to be in a bad mood. It's obvious that he doesn't like Leo all that much. But with him, it's impossible to tell if he's really mad or just being cynical. Either way, it's just more of the same. Just like our homeroom teaches daily dramatic entrance, and once again, the day begins. Alrighty then, let's pick up where we left off. According to Dr. Peaceman's biography, during class, I thought I saw Leo smirk a little, but other than that, nothing exciting occurred. Today is just another boring day in a long string of boring days. Who here knows what amnesia is? It's a terrifying condition when an individual loses all of their memories. It's caused by brain damage, severe trauma, or even infections of one's mucous membrane. The section of the doctor's biography we just covered touches on this condition. The cure for such a scary condition was discovered by Dr. Peaceman. But that said, using amnesia as an excuse for getting a horror isn't going to fly. When I was young, a fair number of my classrooms were unscrupulous enough to try this. And before you get any ideas, I'm still young. In fact, I'm putting the, that fact on the test. Why do you keep saying that? And as per the norm, Tiger's lecture starts to peter out. This has collected this again, starts to rise from the students. Ms. Fujimura? Without being acknowledged by the teacher, Leo suddenly rises to his feet. Attention in the classroom ratchets up immediately as all eyes focus on Leo. The young boy serves the room with a mysterious smile, taking in everyone's startling glances. Oh, and of course my fellow classmates, it is time for me to leave. We will probably never meet again, so I wish you all well. What? The... my head... the pain. Ah, and before I forget, Miss Fujimura, I think you are still young even now. Just your presence is enough to remind me of the beauty of you. You're a remarkable person. After what seemed to be a very slight bow, he immediately seems to disappear from the room. Alright then, let's continue. Please return to page 86. And accompanied by a sound of flipping page, the lesson goes on as if nothing had happened. What is up with people? Ah, <sighs> showing off like that in the middle of class. What a, uh, uh, yeah. If you happen to, if you have used to John, be a little more discreet and that I have to leave crap. Seriously, isn't he supposed to be some kind of aristocrat or princeling or something? Of course, what just happened is impossible. A highly suspicious disappearance in the middle of class and the teacher doesn't seem to care. No one in class says anything and the class continues as if nothing strange has happened. It was the same dull, jury scene as yesterday and the day before. This can't be real. Yeah, I think it's about to go down. After Leo's exit from class, the lesson continues unabated, as if following a set script. Strange. This is definitely strange. It's as if the world tilted slightly and everything within it is losing its sense of presence. My head feels like it's going to explode. The pain is making it hard to remember who I am. Wait, come to think of it. I mean, really? Who am I? What is my name? How old am I? Where do I live? How many people are in my family? What was my life before I started attending this school? I can't remember anything. My memory has been completely erased somehow. How and why did this happen? That's right, the editor in chief of the journalism club. As a president of the journalism club, she should at least know my name. I know I had to have filled out something when I first joined the club. I'll ask her. Hopefully she'll be in her normal spot. He doesn't know his name or anything? Yeah, that's definitely weird. Man, where is everyone? It's like a ghost town around here. Things are getting weird. And the music? 
shows something's going down. Hey girl, what's my name? Oh, our club's age. Did you find out anything yesterday? That didn't cheat, it's our usual cheery self. All I can think about is the pile of dead bodies I witnessed. No, I have to answer by myself. I asked her what my name is. Huh? Your name? Just look it up in the registry in the library. Yeah, the school registry it has everyone's name. If I look at the school registry, it might jog my memories. I'll go to the library. Wait, why didn't she just tell me? Why would she say, look at the thing, instead of just telling me my name? That means she doesn't know. Where's the library? You want to see the registry of names? It's on a bookshelf in the library, I think. But where's the library? Oh, it's right here. I found it. Sukumihara Academy Student Registry. Once I read through this, I should be able to remember everything by myself. I opened the book and began turning pages. Immediately I noticed something's terribly wrong. The pages are bl Really? The girl did say something about NPCs, so that means everybody in the school isn't real. Blank, blank, blank. Every single page was blank. I reached for last year's school registry and when I start flipping through the pages, blank, 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 blank. What is happening here? Who am I? And just what is this place? Wait, where is everybody? Everybody's gone. There's the kid, Leo. There is something wrong with this place, but more worrying is the fact that I can't remember who I am. As I wander the campus, I see Leo walking down a hallway on the first floor. As a transfer student, I can't see why Leo would want to visit any of the freshmen. Also, there's nothing but a dead end up ahead. I wonder what Leo's really up to. I really should end the video, but I'm, I want to see, <laughs> I want to continue. I suddenly have this weird feeling that someone or something is up ahead in the hallway. Who, for some reason, is examining the wall at the end of the hallway with almost excessive interest. The attention to detail is quite impressive. Even the surrounding air is surprisingly substantial. If that is the case, this world is in some ways more real than the real world it represents. But that's just my opinion. How about you guys? What are your thoughts on this? In that moment, it feels like my heart skips a beat. Almost immediately, my blood pressure skyrockets along with my body temperature. But don't. But don't. But don't. <laughs> my pulse is like an explosion in my ears as my blood reaches through my veins. And the reason is clear. Now he, I mean Leo, has turned to face me. I now know for sure he's talking to me as there is nobody else present besides the two of them. Greetings. I believe this is the first time we have an actual conversation. I don't feel any sense of hostility from Leo. In fact, his smile seemed genuinely friendly. His smile had the same effect on me as the rising of the morning sun, warm and comfortable. In addition to his smile, his presence is inviting and exclusive and I find myself drawn to him. Oddly, my worries have vanished. All I can think of is doing as he says, as that's the only way to. My mind feels like it's in a haze. It's like Leo is controlling my thoughts in some way. Attaining school wasn't half bad. I've never had the opportunity to go to one before now. In that respect, this has been quite an interesting experience. However, the time for fun has come to an end. I did not come here to play as being at playing at play at being a student. I can't read for some reason. No matter how enjoyable the detour, eventually one must return to their appointed path. And for me, the time to do so has arrived. With those final words, Leo turns his back on me. Farewell. No, that's not quite right. I don't think farewell would be accurate in this situation. For reasons I cannot explain, I have a distinct feeling that we will see each other again. So I guess I should use the more congenial see you later. Well, it's time for me to move on. I wish you the best of luck. And he walks through the wall like a ghost. With those final words, Leo disappears. It's like he ceases to exist. One moment his hand is on the wall, the next he is gone. The young man in front of me seems to disappear from my very eyes. I want to say reality rejected his existence in it, but it feels like it was the opposite, that he refused to be constrained by it. It wasn't any special ability that allowed him to do so, it's just strength of will.
With his departure, I feel as if a great weight is lifted from my very being. And rather than be a cause for concern, it brings a fundamental con question to my mind. To mind. Who am I? As the question pumped to my head, it began to take on a life of its own, searing my brain. Let's say that was a lot of reading. I should really hurry up in, in this video because I'm running out of disc space. So, I don't know how much longer it's going to record for it cut. Search the wall. I investigate the wall that Leo disappeared through. It's just a concrete wall at the end of the hallway. But the only thing on the floor is dust. But I am positive that there must be something here because Leo walked through the wall. It would be so easy to turn around, go back down the hallway and pretend nothing happened. But there are still things I need to know. I have no memories. That means I've never had anywhere else to go but here. No place to return to. What was it that Leo said? No matter how enjoyable the detour, eventually one must return to their appointed path. That's what he said, didn't he? And beyond this wall lies the appointed path and the truth. If I follow him, I learn an answer to my questions, even if those answers are painful. But ignorance is bliss, but I had to forward to the face of truth and accept it. I want to know. Let's go. Something's different. Down to the floors and the walls, the school has changed the very substance of the being. For some reason, reality cracking this way is intensely disturbing. This world around me is more real than a painting, but not even as real as a sandcastle. I feel like it's so brittle I could tap it and echo would shake this whole world. Where the boring concrete wall once stood, now there's a doorway that I can freely walk through. It's an entrance. No, an emergency exit like stairs to the outside. It's not something of this world. I have no doubt that the world the door leads to is utterly alien. Whatever awaits inside, whatever shape it takes, there's a certain sort of finality to it, seeing it. Ultimately, I've already committed to this pair. I bid farewell to the false world and take my first step along the important pair. Beyond the door seems to be a dismal looking scrapyard. Out in front of me is the smooth skin effigy while trying to figure out exactly what to do with it. Welcome, potential master. A voice comes out of nowhere. That effigy with you is your sword and shield for what lies ahead. It will move in response to your commands. Now then, please proceed. The truth that you seek lies ahead. The motivation of the owner of that voice worried me, but it's obvious I won't learn anything by standing here. Also, there is no longer a path by which I can return. I have no choice but to head into the darkness with only this strange dial as protection. It's my body over there. I made it. It's in the deepest depths of the world beyond the door. This place must be the goal I'm supposed to reach. At least, that's what I thought. It's stifling, the aura of purity that seems to act as a ward against corrupted souls who try to enter. The feeling is familiar. It has the feeling of a chapel where the spirits of the deceased still linger. At first I didn't notice, being overwhelmed by the grandeur of the room. But to one side is a young man in a familiar uniform, lying still on the ground. I call out to him, but there is no reply. I shake him in an attempt to wake him up when I notice he is stone cold. Steve Austin. I, <laughs> I go as pale as the course before me, and I can no longer think coherently. All I can do is stare in bewilderment. It is at this moment, or is it at that moment? The falling effigy lying next to the metal student comes to his feet with a clatter. Before I get a chance to make sense of what's going on, it suddenly twists around and comes right at me. Oh, snap, fight. Um, my, my, my thing is losing big time. And I'm dead.
Hmm, you seem to be lacking as well. I didn't stand a chance against that thing. It seems I wasn't qualified to be here. Me? Qualifications? That's right. I should know everything by now. The truth has to be here. But now, <sighs> everything's going dark. I'm not even really scared. The only feeling that remains in me is regret. Even at the very end, I was unable to remember anything about myself. Someone, anyone, if you make it behind here, please don't forget my name. Did I die? Was that supposed to happen? Well, that was interesting. His story has ended. But what about yours? Before you write your own story, choose the vessel of your power. Uh, uh, I remember this. I got here before. Cause I think I chose the, a magical box girl. And apparently she is really hard to use. A stoic warrior cloaked in red robes. A woman who wields a sword bullet. See, I'm more of a sword user in like RPGs and everything, so I guess I should go with her. So I think this is the guy who uses guns, and I'm not really. Yeah, let's just go with her. If I... Yeah, let's just go with her. Saber, standard. A young woman clothed in crimson rank raiment with the many rhythms of a man. This servant is best suited for novice players. Stoic. Archer, technical. A person of military man with an enigmatic IR wrap and a red cloak. This servant is for players who want to use a variety of skills. And I chose her in this time. Me, caster maniac, a half demon shaman clad in revealing robes. This servant is for players who want to be challenged by facing true adversity. Yeah, that explains why I couldn't get far because I used her and they were destroying me. Cause if you mess up with her, she dies really fast. So let's go. With, let's just go with the novice things. I just want to get through the game. Where is the belfry? In that moment, gentle days end. Wait, I went back in time. I always awaken very abruptly. I don't even think I dream. I suddenly find myself walking to school. My headache worsens day by day until it finally buzzes in my head like an alarm. That day, in potent numbness, I wake up twice as fast as normal. I walk to the school year. School yard is clear and cloudless, 7.30 a.m., but what season is it? When I try to recall what season it is, I start to get so dizzy I almost pass out. I may wind up back in bed if I let go and think. For some time, I have been embracing a rush of useless information. The normal stuff you see at a school, like the hustle and bustle of my classmates by the entrance. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. When I push the dot, my field of vision fizzles. Today, again today, there's a crowd of students milling in front of the school gate, and more are being distract directed that way. As to what's going on, there's a boy in a black uniform in front of the school gate. He's my friend, as I recall. He's Issei Ryudo, as I recall. I remember this from the first time. When Issei noticed me looking at him, he pushes through the crowd. Good morning. Lovely weather we're having, don't you think? Hmm. Why do you look so surprised? We announced at last week's assembly that this month the student council would strictly enforce school rules. 
He runs through his spiel as if this was the first time he ever disclosed information. I already know this. I know it. I already know what happens. It's happened more than once. I'm seized by a headache. So dizzy, I feel like I'm being forcibly logged out of my consciousness. First, let me check your student ID. I sure need to remind you, but it should be on you at all times. My login ID is being checked. It's so obvious now. I answer clearly to the question that usually makes me go dizzy. Oh, so you can choose your gender. Forgot about this. Oh, no. Please enter your name. Ah. Okay, I don't want to use SP Diablo because I think I always use that. So let's go with Emron. Hmm. Emron Justice. Yeah, let's go with that. Nickname. Um, my nickname. I don't know. Wait, let's just put Emron. Yeah, let's go with Emron. Yeah. Great, there's no telling when an emergency might occur, and it will be helpful if you have your ID. I feel nauseous, and I know it has nothing to do with what I ate for breakfast this morning. I feel nauseous because of the world around me. It's repeating itself over and over, and that's making me sick. Now for the uniform inspection. Collar, check. Pants, helms, check. And your socks, check. I want him to get out of my way. I want this repetition to stop. I push him aside and go forward. I'm not nice about it either. Next, the contents of your bag. Notebooks, textbooks, pencil box, not even a whiff of He's still doing it. So it's, it is scripted. Your nails are evenly cut and your haircut is sensible. Indeed, quite remarkable. You're a model student. He keeps on talking louder even though he's facing no one. I have a headache. I'm shivering. I know one thing for sure. This is wrong. This is not the school I know. It can't be. I have to go. I have to hurry and wake up or else it'll be too late. But who am I awakening for? My anxiety and headaches are only getting worse. Afternoon arrives while I desperately try to find a way to escape this bizarre situation. As is now the norm, my vision is overlaid with some kind of unnatural distortion. Uneasiness, futility, <laughs> futility, futility, emptiness. I couldn't say it for some reason. I want someone to explain to me the true nature behind all of these feelings. There must be a key somewhere, something that will have the answers to all of my questions. So, I, so the main character wasn't the guy I just was. This is who I'm pushing for. Wait, let's go to the first floor. The moment I step on the first floor, my feelings of unease intensify. There's a student wearing a red uniform. Leo, a new transfer student. The instant I lay eyes on him, I immediately feel intimidated and humiliated. There's also someone trailing behind him. It looks like one of my classmates. The more I think, the more I realize that Leo isn't the only anomaly I've come across on my campus. There are other things that seem off as well. It's become clearer now. There are people who shouldn't exist, students that may mysteriously vanish. The fabric of reality is coming unraveled. Don't turn away now. What is the truth? Don't turn away now. What defines the world you know? Don't turn away now. There is a reason why you're here. Come, do not allow yourself to close your eyes to the truth. So I was behind them the whole time. Leo and one of the guys in my class are talking in the hallway up ahead. The attention to detail is quite impressive. Even the surrounding air is surprisingly substantial. If that's the case, this world is in some ways more real than the world, real world it represents. How about you guys? What are your thoughts on this? You guys? The moment it feels as if he is including me in his comment. However, Leo begins to begin speaking to my classmate, seemingly oblivious to my presence. Greetings. I believe it's the first time we had an actual conversation. Leo gives me a smile with no hostility. 
However, I have a suspicion there is something malicious behind his Attending school wasn't half bad. I've never had the opportunity to go to one before now. In that respect, this has been quite an interesting experience. However, the time for pointers come to an end. I did not come here to play at being a student. No matter how enjoyable the detour, eventually one must return to their appointed pad. As for me, and for me, the time to do so has arrived. With those final words, Leo turns his back on Farewell. No, that's not quite right. I don't think farewell would be accurate in this situation. For reasons I cannot explain, I have a distinct feeling that we will see each other again. So I guess I should choose the more congenial to see you later. Well, it's time for me to move on. I wish you the best of luck. Leo said as much, even going on as far as to look in my direction. For some inexplicable reason, I'm not surprised that Leo knew I was spying on him. I'm trying to get things straightened out in my mind when Leo suddenly disappears. The student who was following him also disappears after touching the same spot on the wall. At the same moment he vanishes, my vision distorts and the shock threatens to overwhelm me. What is going on here? Why don't this place the source of my unmoved? My account, I place my hand on the wall expecting to be drawn in. I see now that the way to the truth, to why I have these feelings, begins right here. Of course I want to know. The atmosphere changes. There's a doorway, an entrance, where the concrete wall used to be. It's not something of this world. There's no doubt this door leads to some place I'm fathoming. I bid farewell to the false world and take my first step towards the truth. Is this one better than the last one? Because the last one kind of got destroyed. Like, very easily. An entrance to another world. Beyond this door, the previous statement perfectly describes the view before me. Walking behind me is my strange, silent attendant. It is to, it is to be my sword and shield for what lies ahead. A disembodied voice suddenly confirms my thoughts. Although I have yet to learn anything, I need to do something besides staying here. At the very least, there might be some clues to this bizarre experience up ahead. I have no choice but to head into the darkness with only this strange Dao's protection. Oh, I can't see. Oh, well. I don't think I. Yeah, I don't think I had to walk this whole way when I was the other guy. What the? This is nice. I like how they did this. But how long is the walk? I had to transition maybe? No longer a typical school campus, the floors and walls, the air, even the aura are slightly off. It wouldn't surprise me to see a monster pop out of the shadows, very much like a dungeon here. Welcome, potential master. With the shocking suddenness, a voice began speaking. It sounds like it's coming from the empty sky above. If you are looking for answers, you must reach the goal. Now, please step forward. Is that an item? The illuminated cube in front of you is called an item folder. Inside of it is a farewell present of choice for those who of those about to face the coming trial. Touch it to open it. Ether shard. Before you is an enemy program. It is programmed to attack on sight. Touching it will initiate a battle. But you won't actually fight as you are too fragile. The energy given to you will fight in your stead. If your energy is ever destroyed in battle, you will no longer be shielded from harm. To put it bluntly, you will die, so be very careful in battle. But there's no need to be afraid for now. Just do what I say and you'll be perfectly safe for the time being. 
Perked off, why don't I explain a little about battles. First of all, there are three basic commands that you can issue in battle. Attack, Guard, and Break. Each turn in battle can pull up six actions, and you'll need to tell your FPG what your strategy is to be. Battles are by the turns, with six commands being issued each turn. Once confirmed, they will be executed all at once. The aim before you should be quite easy to defeat, as it will only perform Break. Break, which is focused solely on power, shouldn't be much of a problem against attack. Now use the attack command to destroy the program. Okay, just six commands. It's in the up direction. Okay. So it's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors thing. Attack beats break, break beats break. Um, attack beats break, break beats guard, guard beats attack. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I got it. So, how did it go? One thing to know is that in each turn you'll have a two plan a series of six moves that would defeat your foe. The goal is still far ahead. If you must bash in the afterglow of your victory, do so while moving forward. Yeah, I realized. Oh look, here comes another program. You seem nervous. Perhaps you're anxious about fighting in another battle? Do not be alarmed. That enemy isn't strong enough to harm you. It is programmed to only use attack. While attack is a potent action, using guard while light to defend and counter attack. Guard can be used to reduce the damage caused by enemy attack, but I trust you know that. Yeah, I kind of figured that out already. Now that you know how this battle will unfold, use the appropriate command to defeat the enemy program. Yes, that's exactly right. As you may have already noticed, performing three successful actions in a row results in a chain. By performing multiple chain attacks, you can perform a devastating follow-up attack on your opponent. If you land three strikes in a row, you perform an extra attack, which is special to push attack. While doing multiple chain attacks in the heat of battle may be difficult, the results may make it worth the effort. Now please proceed. I'm guessing this one will only use guard. You should be able to use fun to attack a jump, but I'll walk you through this one last time. Control brand will only use guard, but no matter how stop when defense may be able to for break. Okay. Remember, always use the perfect command for any given situation. The skill. Big time. Stop kicking me. You have been through three battles and used the attack, guard, and break command. Someone as intuitive and observant as you must have already noticed this. Each of these have balanced each other out in a situation where no attack is dominant. Why well, just covers the absolute basic of battle and the minimum info you'll need to know. Once you match the basics, all stuff to touch yourself in battle and gain valuable experience. Now please proceed. Okay. So am I done the tutorial? Oh no, it's one more. All the enemy players face so far only is one move which won't happen in a real fight. Like you, your enemies will choose to act based on the situation and general observation. Their actions will be very difficult for you to predict at first. If you face the same enemy multiple times, you'll be able to read their tendencies and patterns accurately. When you first enter a battle, your opponent's moves will be mostly hidden from you. Being able to get your opponent's moves will only limit the amount of inputs to keep a victory. 
Although considering your lack of fighting experiments, I may be expecting far too much from you. But anyway, please try your best. Okay, so it's gonna be break, so attack, attack, break. Attack, attack, break. Okay. Okay, sweet, I got it. Good job. Alright then, please proceed to the final round. Okay, right as soon as I'm done the tutorial area, then I'll I'll finish off the video. This thing has been going on for a while. Oh, there's the guy who died. I made it at the at the end of a very long row after going through a door that suddenly appeared in the wall. The oppressive air of this place where the spirits of the dead still linger. Here's my goal. That's what I thought. Further in, it appears as if someone had collapsed. When I look into his face, it's a student who was following Leo just now. I call out to him, but get no reply. I shake my attempt to make him up. We come up when I notice he had stone cold Steve Austin in a second. I go as tell us the course before me and I can no longer think coherently. All I can do is stare in bewilderment. It is at this moment the falling effigy lying next to the metal stone comes to his feet with a clatter. After having to fight several enemy programs to get here, it's obvious that this thing is an enemy as well. Without warning, it suddenly twists around and comes right at me. Okay, this is the thing though. I don't know his stuff. Okay, attack, attack, guard, break, attack, break. Ow. Ow. No, stop. <laughs> no, I'm supposed to win. I can't guess his stuff. I lost. There was really nothing I could do. Did I get game over already? Really? Hmm. You seem to be lacking as well. I can hear the sound of a distant voice. The time has come. It's getting ever loss. I will consider this round of preliminaries to be over. Farewell. I will pray you'll find peace in your annihilation. That is the voice's final words to me. I don't have the power to protest. I'm going to stare at the floor. I think I'm going to die here. Suddenly at the edge of my now hazy vision, a number of brown colored lumps seem to rise from the ground. Actually, it might be that I just noticed them now. They may have been there from the beginning for all I know. Those lumps are the bodies of an untold number of fallen Tsukumukihari Academy students. Wow. The guy before me was the only one to fall. All of the others made it here and died, unable to do anything. And in a very short while, I suppose I'll become one of them. Maybe I should just close my eyes now. I did all that I could. So maybe it'd be better for it to end now. No, I'm not dying. I refuse to give up. I sun all my strength in an attempt to get back on my feet. However, as I try to move, an unbearably intense pain shoots through my entire body. Me, if that's how it's going to be, no, if this is... No, I refuse. I don't want it to end like this. I cannot ignore the intense pain course through my body. I reach the point where I no longer see stars as my eyes feel like they're on fire. I feel like all five of my senses are being ripped from my body. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of the pain. I'm afraid of losing my senses. I'm afraid of becoming a corpse. And the most terrifying thing, disappearing without a trace for any reason at all. It's not right that I disappear here. My consciousness shot through with its waves of distortion, screams out against the injustice of it all. 
What was the purpose of suffering these headaches just to fade away here and now? What were they all for if I just fade away here and now? I have to stand up. It's okay if I'm scared. It's okay if I'm in pain. I have to rise above all of that. Because I have yet to fight my own coalition and on my own terms. Indeed, you must embrace your fear of death and fight on regardless what fate may await you. Well, well spoken, nameless traveler. Even if the world will never hear of your desire, know that I admire and respect. Close your hands in the fist and raise your head. Your end has yet to come. In fact, your destiny begins now. <clears throat> The sound of breaking glass accompanied by a light cutting through the gloom. I managed to move my weary body and aching head to see what's happening. Happening. I didn't notice it before, but something was slowly rising up from the floor in the middle of the room. That form. Its appearance isn't much different from that of a human being, but something was different, clearly so. The power emanating from it transcended that of any human. Or of, or of any enemy I faced in getting here. An awesome power that seems as if it vaporized anyone and touched worlds within my body almost against my will. Now then, I shall ask you once more. Answer me, are you my master? Yes. Your words are few but beautiful. I like that. I won't ask how you pr how privileged you feel for something. Alright, I give my blessing. I will bestow upon you the honor of being my master. takes a hold of my hand and helps me to my feet. From the hand she had grabbed comes a sudden warmth, and then a sharp pain like I've been cut by a knife. On the back of my hand, as though tattooed, is a sim strange symbol that looks like some kind of crest. Totally confused, I alternate between st staring at the mark of my hand and the person standing before me. And then, a noise behind me brings me back to my senses. Turning around, I see that the ever she from before is still there, now in a fighting stance. I went uncontrollably, calling my previous defeat at a scene. What an excitable master I have. Why are you so flustered? While I am by your side, have no fear that you may lose your way. Remember that victory is all that matters. My blade is the ultimate instrument. Even the muses themselves will bother for the sound it makes. Master, strike with my sword. Show the extent of your ability in this first battle. Is she bending down or is she that short compared to him? I think she's bending down. Oh, I can see everything now. Okay, so guard, attack, break, attack, attack, attack. There we go. She trashed him. Ooh, he got experience. Master MP, Servant HP jumps up big time. With his skill points. 
The battery ever she stops moving, there's no way it'll still function after being effectively torn apart. That wasn't entertaining at all. Considering how long I've waited for such a moment, I am truly unsatisfied. She continues to talk, however the sound of her voice doesn't quite reach my ears. The heat coming from the mark of my hand grew in intensity during a fight and the resulting pain has become unbearable and burns through my consciousness. The mark imp imprinted on your hand is your command cell. It is proof that you hold dominion over a servant. You can use it to give three orders that must be obeyed. Think of them as disposable strengthening spells. It is also proof of your participation in a holy grail war. If you lose it for some reason, you will die. Once again, I hear that voice. I somehow manage to ignore the pain and listen to what it has to say. I can understand your confusion, but before I forget, congratulations, you have endured much to make it here. Now rest for a while. You've achieved your first goal. It was an incredibly clumsy effort to say the least, but that's what made it all the more entertaining. I've had this duty for a long time, but this is the first time I've seen a master as helpless as you. <laughs> That's, uh, okay. Nevertheless, be proud of your achievement. Your quick thinking came as a result of nerves and rashness. Think about it, the voice sounds like that of a 30 year old man, and it's really irritatingly smug. For some reason, I can see the owner of the voice as a priest, dressed in a somber cassock. Oh, you are curious by my identity? I am honored, but I am insignificant. I am merely a part of the system. I am just a god, tasked with giving a standard message and giving the personality of a prior participant. I am no more than words, no more than a mountain you just conquered, no more than a record of the, of the past. A record? So if I raise my objection to this point, does it mean I won't receive any answers in return? Exactly. Well, this is unexpected. You ever see the commendation? Something about you having a light. I have no clue who would say such a thing about me. But that short, short phrase struck my heart because for some unknown reason I knew the words were sincere. And as for I expect good things from you, it seemed like more of a command than an encouragement. Now, let's commence your baptism. You have proven yourself worthy of the honor. For most, the monotony of everyday life continues on without end. Your decision to look beyond the accepted and progress means you have earned the right to exist. However, you have but taken the first step. Be jubilant, young, young knight, for the Holy Grail War begins now. I have no idea what he's talking about. The Holy Grail War? The right to exist? That is correct. An object of great power once existed in the world. One that could grant any desire. People called it the Holy Grail and fought endlessly in an attempt to gain sole possession of it. This war, the system you find yourself in now, is an evolution of those struggles. You stand at the entrance of a deadly struggle where many magi, magi will perish in pursuit of the Holy Grail. Listen, Magi, had I not bestowed upon the earth desire, you'd be merely saints capable of commi committing sin. Now, fight to the death. The fiery throne of heaven will only receive those with the strongest of desires. The voice re reverberates throughout this hidden chapel as if it were the voice of a god. Kill, Magi, Holy Grail that grants wishes. These questions and more swirl inside my head and almost seem to carve themselves into my flesh. In war, a weapon is needed. That is your servant. They're the spirit that pierces the shield that protects. A legendary soul whose purpose is to clear your way to the grail. That is the one who stands beside you. I glance over at the young woman in red standing next to me, who was looking up into the sky. She is my servant. It seems you have decided, and with that decision as payment, I, uh, I now open the gates of the Holy Grail War. The mark on, marks on my hand, my command cell, once again begin to become excruciatingly painful. It's over. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, the way he just like collapsed. I reached the limits of my endurance, and my mind starts to shut down as I lose consciousness. And vaguely, I, I can vaguely hear the voice's final words. Now, let the Holy Grail War begin. No matter the era, deciding who is worthy to do battle is the divine providence of man. Magi, who have been invited here by the moon, show me your true strength. Finally saved. Okay, I'm gonna have to end the video here. That took forever, but I'm liking the game, so I'm gonna try to finish it. So for now, I will see you all later.